Hey everybody, how you doing? Uh, I have to have this little light on on the camera. Uh, so <laughs> even though it's broad daylight outside, uh, my camera must be getting old or whatever. And as you can tell, the light's like diverting away. So I don't really know what's going on with that. Uh, anyway, I figured I would uh, do a change of pace. Uh, oh, by the way, hi Holly. Um, I do a change of pace, and uh, I know a lot of you guys like the Urban Legends and stuff that I put on here. Uh, I think I'll put, you know, just a change of pace. I'm going to read you guys some real, real life uh, werewolf sightings. And then an article about uh, vampires and if they're real or if they really exist. And his uh, theory on that. So, uh, and by the way, I wanted to tell you guys, uh, if you like... The stuff that I do, you'd really like uh, Kolshek the Night Stalker. I don't know if you've ever seen that or not. That's one of my favorite shows. Uh, I'm Elijah the Fearless Vam or the Fearless Monster Killer. I'm sorry, uh, the Fearless Monster Killer. Uh, but Kolshek is the Night Stalker, so you guys might like that. Um, but yeah, I'm going to read you guys these reports. Uh, sorry that my camera is being weird. I'm sorry that uh, it's whatever it's doing. But uh, anyway. This is, I'm sure many of you have heard of it, The Beast of Briar Road, uh, which is a werewolf, or believed to be a werewolf. I think it is. Uh, anyway, the legends of the Wisconsin werewolf go back as far as the original history of the werewolf. The area that became Wisconsin was home to the original tribe that can claim that former tribe members were the first to have the ability to transform into wolves. Uh, while this is a relatively little-known legend, the modern werewolf sightings in Wisconsin are a bit better known. Wisconsin Werewolf Sighting Number 1 Year 1936 Location Jefferson County, Wisconsin <sighs> Mark Scattleman was driving along Highway 18 just outside of Jefferson, Wisconsin when he noticed someone digging in a field off the side of the road. The site was a location where a Native American burial ground was believed to be. I swear I'm not making this up, he said. When the man slowed down to get a better look, the man turned around and faced him. Man or creature turned around to face him. Uh, it turns out that it was a hairy creature that stood on two legs, uh, which Shackleman described as looking like a mix between an ape and a dog. The creature... Uh, had the general shape of a large man with the opposable thumbs and everything. Shackleman drove off in a hurry but remained curious about the creature. The next night he drove past the same area hoping to see the creature again. Uh, he did. This time the man beast growled in a way that sounded like sounded eerily human making a sound that he described as a growl. The Shackleman freaked out and the creature ran off. Alright. Wisconsin Werewolf Sighting, number two, year 1964. Location, Jefferson County, Wisconsin. Dennis was driving along Highway 89 around midnight when he saw a figure running across the road. Uh, when his headlights caught sight of the creature, it was eerily similar to the werewolf scene in 1936. Just a couple of miles away, Large and muscular, uh, stood around seven feet tall, covered in dark brown hair, with a dog-like face. Um, the man waited until the sun was up the next day to return to the scene of the werewolf sighting. He had hoped to find tracks to prove the size of the beast, uh, but the ground was too hard. It was, or he was unable to find the place where he had originally sighted the werewolf or seen the werewolf all right third werewolf sighting 1972 jefferson county wisconsin a woman whose name is unreported called 911 when she heard someone trying to break into her home in the middle of the night upon further investigation it appeared that it was not a person but a large animal that had tried to get in uh, a few weeks later the creature returned again and tried to force its way into the house. This time the woman saw the creature. She described it as around eight feet tall, covered in dark brown hair, and it stood on two legs. It had long arms with hands that had long, sharp claws on them. Uh, 
When the creature couldn't get inside the house, it went out to the woman's barn and attacked a horse. The horse was alive, but had a deep cut across its back. The Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources investigated, finding a footprint that was said to be over a foot long. Alright, Wisconsin Werewolf number 4, 1989, Elkhorn, Wisconsin. The town of Elkhorn, uh, by the way, this is the first sighting out of Jefferson County, so note that. Uh, the town of Elkhorn was about an hour south of Jefferson County, so he's sticking close to that. Uh, <clears throat> Anyway, Elkhorn had its own reports of the Wisconsin werewolf. The first werewolf sighting occurred in 1989, though it was reported, or wasn't reported <laughs> until another sighting was reported 10 years later. Uh, a woman named Lenore had seen a large figure on the side of the road. As she got closer, she realized that it was not a person, but a tall beast covered in gray slash brown hair with a dog-like face uh, featuring fangs, pointy ears and glowing yellow eyes so the natural suspects and then there's a a bunch of uh, 1989 sightings well there's two more uh, then there's a 1990 sighting that I thought was interesting an 11 year old girl named Heather I don't want to say her last name uh, saw what she thought was a large dog stand up on its hind legs and run away she lived near Bry Road, uh, which would later become part of the famous nickname for this werewolf. Uh, Wisconsin sighting number eight, year 1992, location Elkhorn, Wisconsin. Uh, Tammy, the wife of Scott, was driving back to her home on Briar Road when she saw the creature. She also described a tall, broad-shouldered, and muscular beast covered in dark brown hair. Uh, the dog-like face and glowing yellow eyes matched the previous descriptions of the Wisconsin werewolf, though at this point the other sightings had not been widely circulated. Wisconsin werewolf sighting number 9, year 1999, location Elkhorn, Wisconsin. This is the sighting that the first, oh this is the sighting that first got everyone talking. Uh, it was the night of Halloween, Halloween 1999, and uh, an 18 year old woman named Dorsey I don't think that was her name, but all right. I uh, was driving along, you guessed it, Briar Road, when her car certainly uh, suddenly jerked as if she had hit someone. Oh my lord. Let me start that over, I'm sorry. This is the sighting that first got everyone talking. It was the night of Halloween, 1999, and an 18-year-old woman named Dorsey was driving along, you guessed it, Briar Road, when her car suddenly jerked as if she had hit something. She got out of the car and walked back along the road, uh, straining to see. Then she caught sight of what she had hit. A huge, dark, hairy figure began rushing towards her. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Gibson uh, ran back into her car and began to drive away. The beast reportedly jumped up onto the trunk of the car, uh, but due to the witnesses of the rain-covered car, uh, it could not hold on and fell to the ground. <clears throat> Gibson says she drove back to the location that same night with a young trick-or-treater and they both saw a large figure laying on the side of the road they didn't stay long Gibson reported the sighting the next day which is what brought the other witnesses to share their tales at this point no one was sure that the creature was or what the creature was so they dubbed it the Briar Road Beast or the Beast of Briar Road um, I don't believe the last account by the way it sounds like a kid's story uh, especially on Halloween night to get attention I don't believe that at all and if a big wolf is gonna stand or a werewolf is gonna stand on the back of your car there's gonna be some scratch marks there's gonna be something uh, it's not just gonna be you know nothing there there's gonna be a little bit of proof uh, that a big seven foot tall uh, werewolf was standing on the back of your car so or that you hit that thing. Don't you think that your car would be pretty messed up if you hit something like that? Anyway, then we go to do vampires really exist? Intriguing question. I think they do. That's why I have a sharp wooden stake in my house for every occasion. Uh, I also have silver bullets with a cross on the end of them. 
Can't be too careful out there, folks. People are constantly asking me, do vampires really exist? It seems that no matter how much evidence there is to suggest, they either do or they don't. Uh, most people are not satisfied with a or without a conclusive answer. I suppose it's human nature to want to know definitely. But without hard scientific evidence in hand, uh, how do we determine if vampires really exist or not? While we may not have an airtight case to prove that vampires are real, there is evidence to suggest that this may indeed be the case. It's the classic problem with myths and legends uh, in general, but especially with myths and legends as big as vampires, werewolves, and etc. We can't prove that they are real, but we also can't prove that they're not real. There are plenty of examples from the past where scientists believed uh, a creature to be extinct only to find it alive and well in a remote part of the world. Uh, kind of like the panda bear, actually. For a long time that was believed to be a myth. Uh, explorers thought that was a myth. They laughed about it until they went farther into the jungle and discovered the panda bear. It was real. Um, the legendary sea monster, the Kraken, was thought to have been pure fantasy until giant squids matching the, Kraken, uh, the Kraken's description were finally discovered. Throughout this site, I've tried to explain exactly what the modern vampire is and what it isn't. But remember that there are largely different uh, descriptions of vampires or vampiric uh, activity. A vampire-like creature... Uh, there are all kinds of vampire-like creatures throughout mythology uh, and around the world. While we struggle to come up with a fixed definition of what a vampire is, we may be leaving out various uh, mysterious and unexplainable creatures around the world that have fed into vampire mythology. At the same time, it is exactly the fact that nearly every culture around the world has independently uh, identified vampiric creatures that makes us ask the question, do vampires really exist? If we had hard evidence, we wouldn't be even asking the question. It would be like asking, do zebras exist? If we could prove it, there would be no question. At the same time, just because we can't prove it, doesn't mean it's not true. Plenty of people believe in a god um, that rules from a place called heaven, even though they don't have any hard proof of, its, of his or her existence. Uh, so why not believe in vampires? So do vampires really exist? There's no way to be sure. There have been reports from around the world over thousands of years uh, of creatures like these. If vampires don't exist, then how do you explain all these sightings and encounters? A hoax is one thing, but the same hoax being played over and over again for thousands of years across independent cultures is entirely different. We have reason to believe they might exist because of these reports, but we have reason to be skeptical because we don't have the proof we so badly desire. Keep in mind that uh, if you were to encounter a vampire, you probably would not live to tell about it. Not only are vampires insatiably hungry for human blood, but they live by a code that requires their existence to remain secret, only making detection that much more difficult. In my opinion, the only way to answer this question is to give the only honest answer anyone can. Do vampires really exist? Maybe they do, maybe they don't. I, for one, treat vampires like I treat demons. If they do exist, I really don't want to run into one. Therefore, I choose to be cautious about my actions and activities and limit my exposure to any of these kinds of beings to a purely inquisitive one. Better safe than sorry or dead. So, that was an article on Do Vampires Really Exist? Uh, you can find that on godsandmonsters.com. Uh... There are many cases of uh, vampire activity that you go back to China, uh, a lot of stories originate there from thousands of years ago. Um, let's see where else. There's vampire activity in Egypt, ancient Egypt. Uh, and Europe is full of vampire activity. In the Dark Ages, there's one story in particular that I always kind of found uh, strange. Uh, this one guy's father had died and he had been dead for 10 years. And uh, a young soldier came to the house one night because, uh, you know, he was just looking for a place to stay and they welcomed him in. And they were all sitting down to eat 
And then this man shows up, and he, he's got long gray hair, and he, he looks kind of old and run down, and he's got spots on him, and uh, the soldier couldn't figure out why everybody looked so creeped out. Everybody was just, you know, staring at him like, oh, man, what is this guy? Uh, you know, it's kind of weird. Uh, and everybody got really quiet. Nobody said a word. Where previously how they had been laughing and having a good time. And then the next morning when everybody got up they realized that their dad, the head of the family, was uh, on the table dead. He had been drained of blood. And they told the young soldier uh, that day that the man who had come in the house, that they had welcomed in the house, was their grandfather who had been dead for 10 years. So they went to his grave, they dug him up, they, excuse me, they, uh, Drove a stake through his heart. They cut off his head, which in the real vampire legends, uh, you are supposed to cut off their head and uh, nail their body, you know, stake through the heart, nail their body to the ground so they can never arise again. Uh, and pretty much dismember the body just to make sure that it would never rise again. Uh, so that's a case of uh, vampirism. Uh, and then you have fake vampires, you know, people that believe they're vampires or want to be vampires, but they're really just human beings. Uh, and, you know, I always tell my friends all the time, we'll always be talking about, how, you know, you think vampires could exist. And I say, yeah, definitely. In the modern times, oh yeah. Uh, because people are so skeptical these days, they don't want to believe anything unless they have hardcore evidence, which... That's a good thing, but it's also a bad thing because you should always be cautious, no matter what. Um, you know, in today's modern society, you have underground clubs or raves where these people get together and they think that they're vampires or they, you know, act like they're vampires. I guess it's role play. Uh, a real vampire could go right in there, you know, hypothetically, uh, and they would never know. You know, they would never know that that person is a real vampire or a real creature of the night. Uh, or a real damned uh, soul, whatever you want to call them, and uh, just drink somebody's blood because there is blood drinking uh, in those. Sorry, the light went on on me again. Uh, in those clubs, you know, they do drink each other's blood, which is kind of sick and nasty and disgusting. Uh, but that's just my personal opinion. But anyway, someone could go in there and drink somebody's blood or a couple people's blood and and slip out unnoticed. And before somebody realized those people were dead. Dude would be long gone. So, in modern day times, it's more possible for a vampire to exist than ever. See, our ancestors were very, very uh, skeptical, or not skeptical, they were very, very uh, paranoid about things like that. You know, they kept their eyes out for creatures like that. Uh, today, we do not. I think we need to learn a lesson from them. Now, we don't need to be, of course, uh, you know, as frantic about it as they were. I'm not saying that we need to repeat a... Uh, Salem Witchcraft Trial, I mean, that was a little too much. I'm just saying, be cautious. You know, it's always good to have hard evidence and facts, but be cautious at the same time. So, uh, I hope y'all enjoyed this. Peace, love. Uh, and I hope y'all have a great day. Uh, Holly, I hope you're doing good out there. And, uh, hope you have a great day.